Today we're going to talk about wind protection for your shotgun microphones. Hey guys, thank you for joining me. I'm Carlos Quintero from Media on Q, and today I want to talk to you guys about wind protection for shotgun microphones. Now, what you see here on the table are a blimp, of course, the foam that comes when you buy a shotgun microphone. Then this is another Rode windscreen. This is the dead wombat that goes around the blimp. And the reason why I have all of these out here is simple. When I got started, I knew that I needed some sort of wind protection for my shotgun microphones. So what I did, of course, is I went the economic route and I purchased something like this. So rather than share that, what it is that I'm using now right off the bat, we're gonna go and put this to the test because it's kind of windy outside and it is a good opportunity to see sort of how this works. So to get started, we're gonna get started with just the foam that is included when you purchase the shotgun microphone. The shotgun microphone that I'm gonna use is going to be the Rode NTG4 Plus. I'm going to feed the sound from the shotgun microphone into the camera, which I'm gonna be using the Sony RX0 for this test, shooting an S-Log using the Rode Reporter Kit that you guys see here. Okay guys, so that you guys can get a really good idea about how this microphone sounds using the various types of windscreens, the only thing that I'll do in post will be to loudness normalize to minus one dB. That way you guys can get a real sense as to how these different wind protections perform when going outdoors. Now, the house did block some of the wind, right? And we didn't put the microphone aimed it directly at the wind source or the wind direction, but this should give you guys an overall feel as to how these different windscreens perform. All right, so first we're gonna start by checking out just the regular foam that comes with the uh, shotgun mic when you buy it from Rode. So this is the Rode NTG4 Plus. And I am shooting this on the new Sony RX0 and I'm recording in 4K by pumping out 4K onto the Shogun Inferno. So we'll see just how well just this little foam does with the wind that we have right now. Now just for accuracy's sake, and it is freaking cold, okay? So the temperature right now is 32 degrees. I'm in the backyard. It looks like we have winds in the 19 mile per hour range, which makes the temperature feel like it's 20. So let's try on putting one of the little furries, the, not the kind of come in a blimp, but just to kind of go right over the shotgun mic and see if that makes any kind of difference. For this next test, we're gonna be using the Rode WS6 which is a deluxe windshield that sells for about $57. So let's see how this does. Whew. Whew. It's cold. All right, guys, so now I have this furry and it has some foam on the inside and then the furry all around the outside. This is made by Rode. So we will see just how well it's able to either manage with the wind or whether it absolutely makes no difference. Um, yeah, so again, just outside, checking out these different wind solutions or, or wind suppressors for shotgun mics to see if any of these are worth actually purchasing or buying rather than a blimp. So what I'll do now is I actually have another furry that goes right on the shotgun, but this one is made by Aperture. So let's see if this makes any kind of difference. And let me tell you, I should have wore gloves because it is cold out here. Okay, so please be sure to let me know what you guys think about how well this WS6 did or didn't perform in the outdoor windy test. Now, because I have with me this other windscreen, which happens to be an aperture windscreen. So this is the aperture windscreen that comes with the Aperture Deity Location Kit. So when you purchase it, it comes with the uh, pistol grip, it comes with the, obviously the Deity, but then also this uh, deluxe windscreen. Now let's see how this performs. All right guys, so the part that sucks about this is that obviously I can't 
control when the gusts come or don't come. But this furry is the one that, see, it just got windier. This furry is the one that comes with, uh, when you buy the Aperture Deity with the kit, you know, that has the handle. So this is actually the handle from that kit. And this is the furry that ships with that uh, Aperture Deity. So let's see if I, yeah, it's gonna, this probably is not gonna sound as good as the other one because the wind apparently decided to pick up. But regardless, we're gonna get to see sort of how these perform. For the next test, what I'll do is I will put on the blimp and then we'll see sort of what that difference is. And again, the shotgun that I'm using is the Rode NTG4 Plus. So I'll be right back. Okay, for this next test, we're gonna be putting the Rode NTG4 Plus into this Rode blimp. This should give us the best wind protection thus far. So let's see how this does. All right guys, so now I'm out here and I, what I did is I put the NTG4 Plus right inside of the blimp. This should give us the best sound out of all thus far. Now, what I did, because it's inside of the blimp, is I did go ahead and trigger that um, high frequency boost so that I wouldn't get my voice all sounding muddy inside of the blimp. As it turns out, <clears throat> okay, so the wind is picking up and it's coming in this direction. So you guys will have to uh, let me know what you guys think. I believe that the blimp is gonna do a much better job, but of course we won't know that until I go into post and actually listen because I'm not monitoring. Now the best level of wind treatment around the microphone is obviously to put it inside of a blimp but then also to put that furry, I think they call it a dead cat or dead wombat or something, um, on top of the blimp. And I'll do that next. So I'll be right back and we'll see what that sounds like. Okay, so after putting the Aperture Deity into the Rode blimp, what I did is I made sure to press this button, which happens to be the high frequency boost. So the purpose of that was to make sure that because it's enclosed inside of a blimp that I didn't muddy up my sound. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below, whether my voice sounded better or worse after I put it in the blimp. Okay, now the last level of protection, which should be the highest level of protection, would be to put the Rode NTG4 inside of the Rode blimp, but then also use this dead wombat. Now the dead wombat and the blimp they do sell they do sell them as a kit um, and i believe that the price for the road blimp with the wombat is about 299 if you happen to have purchased the road blimp by itself and you want to add the dead wombat you can actually pick one up for about 50 dollars all right guys so i'm back and in theory this should be the highest level of wind protection that i can actually use on this shotgun. So it's the Rode NTG4 Plus inside of the Rode Blimp with whatever this furry thing is called. I think it's a dead cat. And as you guys can see, the wind is coming in this direction. And in theory, this is supposed to be the best option if you're outside and there is any kind of sustained wind. So we'll take this back in post. I'm gonna get my little icicle hands thawed out I'm going to start editing this video. We'll take a look at it and see sort of how this performs. But the whole objective really is to figure out if you should even consider spending the money on the other wind treatments, you know, not the ones that are the blimp or the covers for the blimp. Because what happened to me when I got started is that I knew I needed some sort of wind protection, right? And this setup is more expensive than just the little slip-on foam with the furry thing, right? I don't even remember how much that thing cost, but that's not very expensive. This is more expensive. So I went ahead and I bought those. And the reality is, is that at this point, I have never used them because the one time that I actually tested with them, well, you guys will find out in the video, see how they did. And what I'll do is I'm actually posting this 
video also in 360, the outside portion, in case anybody wants to see what the setup is. But essentially, I'm using almost all road equipment. So it's the Rode Furry, it's the Rode Blimp, and I don't have the new one, the one that has the, the new suspension. I have the old one, the one with the rubber bands. And I'm using this Rode, I think it's the Reporter thing, I, I don't remember, but it's their wireless system where you can actually um, use it to wirelessly uh, power a shotgun, which is what I'm doing right now. And that's going directly into the Sony RX-0. The RX-0 is pumping out the signal into the Shogun Inferno, and that's how I'm capturing in 4K, because the Sony RX-0, while it records in S-Log2, which I think is pretty cool, and you guys will see here what the dynamic range, how well it's doing, it doesn't capture in 4K, and that's the one thing about it. But um, the way that I'm planning on using it, this is gonna work just fine. All right, guys, so I am freezing my butt off. I'm gonna call it a day and go back in the studio and get warmed up. Catch you guys later. I wanna take a moment and say this and make sure that I'm crystal clear on it. The reason why I went this route, instead of right away buying the Road Blimp with the Dead Wombat, is simply because this is much more affordable. Now, the reality is that when I decided to try this, because mounting the shotgun microphone right on top of my C300 or C300 Mark II and slipping this guy on makes it super easy because as a solo shooter, I don't always have a sound person. And I also don't always have the ability to have a location sound mixer helping me while I'm catching the B-roll. So that was the main reason why I did this. The one time that I decided I was gonna give it a shot, it was a beautiful day. There were no clouds in the sky whatsoever. I got out there, 15 minutes into it, it was still beautiful. And then the wind started. But not only did it start, but it picked up. And this simply did not cut it for me. So after that one project where I brought back my B-roll and I got my location sound and I was working on editing my piece and I realized how much I couldn't get rid of that wind sound, this has never, other than for this video, ever left the shelf. So you guys will have to decide, you know, whether it's within your budget or not, or, or what the best approach might be for you. But I'm going to say that you should save yourself the cash and apply it towards a real wind protection solution. Well guys, that does it. We went through and we tested these different windscreens and you guys now have a sense as to how it performed. I will be uploading the outdoor portion in 360 in case you guys are into that so you can see sort of what my actual setup was, what my environment was, and then get a better sense or a better idea as to how these different wind solutions perform. So as you guys know, this is not an option for me. This by itself couldn't be an option for me. If I'm outdoors, I need minimally the blimp and if there is any kind of wind, I'm not going to risk it and I'm going to go ahead and use the dead wombat. I hope you guys found the information helpful. I hope that I was able to help you maybe, maybe save a little bit of money. If you haven't already subscribed, please consider subscribing. And if you enjoyed the video, please do let me know. Until next time, I'm Carlos Quintero from Media IQ, helping you compete in today's web economy. Thank you for watching.